Rosie was eight years old. Rosie's mom had a new job, so this meant that their family had to move to another town. For Rosie, the most exciting part about this was that she was going to get a new bedroom. Her dad had said she could have it decorated however she wanted it, and so after much thought, Rosie had decided upon a rainforest theme with lots of leaves and parrots and monkeys. This had taken Rosie's dad by surprise. He had thought she was going to ask him to paint it pink. A whole rainforest design was going to be a lot harder, and so it was. One month after they'd moved into their new house, Rosie's bedroom still hadn't been decorated. It wasn't a dreadful bedroom, just plain white walls and not much else. But for Rosie, it just wasn't what she'd been hoping for. Whenever she tried to ask her dad when her room was going to be decorated. He never seemed to have the time to do it. Oh, I've got some plumbing that needs doing in the bathroom. He would say, or the hedge needs trimming in the garden, or these new tiles won't get on the kitchen wall by themselves, you know. Meanwhile, Rosie's mom was spending longer and longer hours at work, so much so that most days she had left the house before Rosie was awake and didn't come home until Rosie's bedtime. All the fun of moving house quickly wore off, and instead, Rosie felt disappointed, sad, and a little bit lonely. She tried to fill her days by playing with her toys, which often meant organizing a tea party for her doll, her cuddly unicorn, and a purple teddy bear called Jeremy. Jeremy was always a nuisance at tea parties because he never sat up properly and was forever toppling over. On this particular day, Rosie had spent five minutes trying to get Jeremy to sit up, and then was just leaving her bedroom to fill up the teapot with some water from the bathroom when Jeremy slumped over again. Ah! Groaned Rosie as she turned her back on the fallen teddy bear. As she was returning with the full teapot, she decided that perhaps Jeremy wouldn't be invited any more. She'd find someone else to join the tea party from amongst her toys, but as she stepped back into her bedroom, she was greeted with a strange sight. Jeremy was sat upright. Hmm, that's odd," she said. "I'm quite sure you had fallen over, Jeremy." That night, there was a terrible storm outside with great big gusting winds. Rosie's bedroom window was half open, and so the wind flapped her curtains while the noise of the gale kept her awake. At one point, she was so fed up with the racket that she wriggled down underneath her covers with her hands over her ears. When she eventually removed them, she could no longer hear the wind and thought the storm must have stopped. But when she popped her head out from the covers, she could still hear it. But the sound wasn't nearly as loud, and what's more, the curtains were now still. She hopped out of bed and checked her window. It wasn't half open anymore. Someone had closed it. The next morning at breakfast, she was pleased to see that her mum hadn't left for work yet and was enjoying a cup of black coffee made by her dad. Mum, did you shut one of my windows last night? Rosie asked. No, darling," said Rosie's mom. "It wasn't open when I got home from work and looked in on you. You must have imagined it being open." Rosie looked at her dad. Jeremy fell over at my tea party, but when I came back in the room, he was sat up again. Did you stand him up, Daddy? Tea party? No, pumpkin. I was busy in the garage all day yesterday. You must have imagined him falling over. But Rosie was sure she hadn't imagined either thing. Something was going on. She spent the rest of the morning playing in her room, but she wasn't just playing. She was also conducting an experiment. Firstly, she carried some clean socks to her drawer, making sure to drop one on the floor as she did so. Five minutes later, she checked the carpet, and the sock was gone. 
She found it in the drawer. Then Rosie got her wooden building blocks out and pretended she couldn't build a tower. Every time she got above six blocks, she deliberately make a mess of it, causing the whole tower to come tumbling down. Eventually, she threw herself on the bed and pretended to cry on the pillow. By the time she looked up, the tower of blocks had been beautifully made, as tall as she was. Hmm, thought Rosie. She looked around the room, peered under the bed, checked in the closet, nothing. Hello, said Rosie. Is somebody there? You can come out now. Rosie's eyes darted around the room and finally settled on the figure of a little girl in a pale dress in the corner. She looked incredibly shy, but more noticeable was the fact that she wasn't quite all there. In fact, you would say that she was positively see-through. Are you a ghost? asked Rosie. The little girl nodded her head slowly. Would you like to have a tea party? Again, the little girl nodded with the hint of a smile. That's good. You can take Jeremy's place. I'm sure he won't mind, said Rosie as she hopped off the bed. And so the two very different girls had a wonderful day together. And soon the little girl ghost was chatting away with Rosie. Rosie discovered her name was Elizabeth and learned that she'd been a ghost in the house for 100 years, but was always too afraid to talk to anyone for fear of frightening them. She was a nice girl, and so she did little things to help, pretending the families living in the house were her family too. When it was time for dinner that evening, Rosie was sad to go down, but delighted to find Elizabeth still there, hiding in her room when her dad put her to bed later. Elizabeth joined Rosie on her bed. Your dad's always busy, isn't he? said Elizabeth. Yeah, he is. I don't think I'll ever get my bedroom decorated like a rainforest, answered Rosie. Then why don't you and I do it? suggested Elizabeth. I've got really good at art over the last 100 years. And so, the next morning, after breakfast, Rosie went into the garage and found the decorating equipment and various pots of paint. Her dad was already busy outside, mending a rain pipe. Back in her bedroom, Rosie spread out a sheet upon the floor, found some of her books about rainforests to show Elizabeth what she wanted, and they got to work. That evening, Rosie's mom was back in time for dinner. And so, it was both her mom and dad who took her up to bed that night. Can you imagine their faces when they saw the beautifully painted rainforest mural on the bedroom walls? Trees and plants and hanging vines, waterfalls and rocks and streams, parrots and toucans and hornbills, monkeys and jaguars and snakes. But, but but said Rosie's dad. Was this always like this? asked Rosie's mom. Weren't the walls white? No, said Rosie with a straight face. They've always been like this. You must have imagined them being white. And so Rosie's parents tucked her into bed, kissed her goodnight, and went downstairs, somewhat confused. And Rosie and Elizabeth fell about giggling. From that day on, they became the best of friends. The end. So that you don't miss a single episode, just click that subscribe button.